Hello. I wish you all the best for this conference. My name is Dr. Angela Dramnabwaje, the Executive Director of the ARC Foundation Ghana. Once again, it's a pleasure to uh, engage with you as a um, woman of your church. And I wish to thank Mrs. Adia Pena for the invitation to speak to you um, on this topic. The topic that I was given is improving upon the gains of women in addressing the dynamics of gender-based violence in church and society. This topic presumes that um, some gains have been made in the area of gender-based violence in church and society. So I'll do my best with the help of the Lord, uh, Holy Spirit, to address this question uh, as best as I can. Um, in the first place, we need to understand that gender-based violence is actually a very endemic problem in our society. I'm sure most of you have heard about um, cases that have gone up even during the COVID area just because uh, people are living together in uh, close quarters, um, in their own compounds, in their homes. And uh, it has made violence to escalate uh, within families and family setups. And that is a very, very um, sad thing to say. Mm -hmm. If you should contact our police and they tell you the number of cases that come to our Domestic Violence and Victim Support Unit of the Ghana Police Service, it is, it is harrowing. The thousands of cases. From 2013, we've had almost every year more than 15,000 cases being reported to that unit alone. But if you look at the number of prosecutions and convictions, it's just a tiny fraction which shows you that sexual and gender-based violence and domestic violence are very endemic in our society. But we are not doing enough despite the gains that have been made. And these gains have come through policy and laws. But the, the will to enforce these laws, the will to implement, the will to sensitize the, 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 uh, the, the public consistently, the will to um, provide services that people who have been affected would use, all of these things are not in place. Uh, even if they are, it's in very minute quantities, if you like, if I can put it that way. So gains have been made, yes, laws have been passed. In Ghana, there's no lack of laws on these, sub uh, on these issues. Children's laws are there, well, laws concerning women are there, laws concerning gender-based violence, which happens to whether you are a man or a woman, they are there. Okay, but how do we ensure that these laws are working? That has always been our problem. It is because we have a certain cultural attitude uh, towards gender-based violence. We think that it's not important. But if only we're counting the cost, beating somebody up, you know, insulting them, make, uh, rubbing their face in the ground and so on, we should call it out for what it is. It is sin. Paul talks a lot about communication and says that no corrupt communication should come out of our mouth. Only that which will bring edification to another person. So when people are insulting others, look at you. You, you dirty woman who will marry you when I leave you. Okay? You've had two children already. You are good for nothing. And those things, they are off the mark. We need to call them out as sin. We need to call them out as things that are flouting God's laws. And there's no excuse for them. Sometimes people will tell you, oh, but maybe the person is poor or the person is frustrated or the person is um, angry, provoked. Well, even Paul says, be angry, but do not sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Okay. So you would find that um, there's a lot of uh, um, work to be done around uh how we address these issues so that they will glorify our, our Lord and Savior. And then we, we, we don't only call it out as sin, but we should also uh, preach about how to stop it, how to prevent it, how to protect those within our families, okay? The, the women, the girls, the young men, and all of those things. We need to um, preach about it. We seriously need to take them up and you walk humbly with your God. A certain attitude towards God also gives us a certain attitude towards the next person, towards our spouses, towards our children. Without that attitude, it is hard to 
love mercy and to do justice because you yourself become very hardened and uh, when you look at a psalm like psalm 10 it's a it's a psalm that comes from the cry of somebody's heart who is seeing a lot of violence and oppression perpetuated by certain wicked people in fact it hits so close to home that you can you can you may even think that this is something that is happening within a domestic setting where somebody has decided to oppress another person or people who lie in wait for for young people to be able to um, harm them especially sexually or through some other means and if you read psalm 10 you see the cry of the heart of the one who is writing it that god should arise and deal with these wicked people and is looking forward towards the time when the man of the earth will not oppress anymore and we pray that soon that time will come of course we know that is when our lord and savior jesus christ comes and establishes his kingdom on earth which we are all looking forward to and uh, but in between that time he still calls on his children his church to pay attention to the issues of the vulnerable the issues of the fatherless the widows the issues of those who are being abused the issues of those who don't have a voice to speak for themselves all through the prophetic books god keeps referring to be okay no you'll be breaking the law so you have to make sure that you're able to connect them to the kind of service within the police that will also be able to help the child and these are things that we need to learn we need to educate ourselves on and know what to do we can't keep covering up crimes that happen in our society just because we think that it's happening to a vulnerable person or so on and so on and so forth the perpetrators will never feel that they are accountable in fact they will keep doing it and like psalm 10 says the man of the earth that oppresses you know they'll keep doing it and they will not be held accounts for it so it's important for us to understand how to build these system systems within our churches and to connect with other um, services that we are confident can provide the kind of help that are uh, the people who are hurting need it's not every service that can help let's for example a, a, a christian family okay some may be too um how do you call it too worldly for 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 a christian family to use maybe they'll come up with issues that you may not be happy about or you don't think is biblical but there are services in our country that um are, are also based on scripture on faith and so on and may be able to help you these are things that we need to find out and be able to use as appropriate and the last thing i'll say about this is that as the church we are called to trust the lord in all things as against god's will against god's laws against god's word and uh we see um the model of jesus christ and how he as the god of all glory would actually uh, submit to the father to come on earth and 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 die the way he did for us he 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 disregard he put aside his glory his power he had all of that and came down and submitted to the father for our sake that's the same way in which uh, the church must understand that we need to um, impress upon our people and mind mind you <laughs> christians are doing this christians are very much involved in uh, in violence in their homes sometimes even if it's not physical violence there is a manipulative violence there is emotional violence there is all kinds of violence that is going on in christian homes sometimes perpetrated by men sometimes women but we know that most of the times it is the women that these things are perpetrated against so we need to be mindful of that um how do we improve upon these gains made well the topic presumes that it's gains made by women but i keep saying that this is not a woman's issue we do it wrongly when we make it a woman's issue it's a, an issue that has to do with the basic unit of our society the family when the family is breaking down the whole society is breaking down but as somebody who has kept herself and uh in in a way that um honors the lord to be taken advantage of by a, a, a gentleman that she thought she could trust and these are cases that are common some people may blame her and ask what were you doing when he tried to do this to you that's not the question at all um, 
gender based violence is gender based violence and we need to address it as it is um not too long ago there was a case of a man who approached me and said that you know um for some time now he gets very easily angered with his wife and it ends up with him beating his wife and um, he doesn't know what is wrong and and so on and so forth um and uh, what surprises him is that even though other people annoy him at the workplace uh, and in other settings he does not beat them so why is he beating his wife um, and you could see that this gentleman thankfully at least this is one of the gentlemen who wants to find out what is actually happening so he can do something about it which is a good sign but for many they don't even uh, acknowledge that there's a problem that they may have a problem that needs to be addressed and to see how the family can be saved uh, there are many many reports of young females being um, defiled sexually assaulted um, and all seriously about the issues of violence in our church in our society it's rampant in the covid era, era it has even worsened and we need to um, really uh, see how we can we can when we go to our prayer meetings address these and and bring them before god we should even invite maybe people women or men who may be suffering from uh, these kinds of abuses and pray for them specifically and pray about their issues and also give them the kind of encouraging word and refer them appropriately to our church structures and systems that are able to help them counsel them and help them back on their feet so these are the a few things that i'll share with you about how do we improve the gains that have been made so far and i'm hoping that it would be of help to your conference it will be helpful for the women but particularly for the leaders of our churches let's not make this a women's issue let's make this a societal issue a national issue a church issue a family issue and one that is also worth bringing before the lord our god who has such a heart for those who are suffering those who are abused those who are vulnerable and 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 ask for his help in, in direction in how we should deal with it uh, uh, using all the resources and the another thing that needs to be done is that the church should actually improve on what the state has done by making the laws and policies in setting up systems of uh, work okay systems uh, counseling units trained personnel okay we have deacons we have counselors in our churches and so on but many of our counselors do not have a clue on how to address domestic violence issues or sexual and gender based violence issues they don't have the training for it they don't have the capacity for it but this is something that can be done the reason being that you can be trained for counseling but if you don't understand the dynamics of gender based violence you will not be able to do an effective job you would see it as a common household conflict but gender based violence are not common household conflicts that we take through mediation and arbitration and then tell people you know just forgive each other and go along and stay the way you are if you don't address it somebody may die somebody may be maimed and sometimes we are not able to even protect those who have already been harmed in a way that will be helpful for them and that will get them out of the situation in which they are in so i think that it's important for churches as women in the church as men in the church as pastors priests to begin to think about how do we improve our counseling units through training and education on issues such as this who seems to be in the lead or seems to be more powerful have the penchant of of abusing the the less powerful unless the law restrains them or the grace of god touches them in their hearts in such a way that they 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 are minded not to abuse or oppress the people who are less powerful we can't run away from these power dynamics so you cannot address the issues of gender-based violence within the church and society uh, when you don't recognize that more powerful people culturally given actually tend to perpetrate these kinds of oppression against those that they see to be less powerful so it's mainly a power and control issue 
if we have now gained the fact that we have laws and that people have some knowledge about um, these laws and the fact that these things are wrong, without understanding that when we don't address the power dynamics in relationships, these things are likely to remain in our society. And even people who are supposed to help us, like the police themselves, will continue to be perpetrators because nobody calls them out on the wrong use of power within their own homes and uh, in, in, in aspects of society and so on and so forth. Maybe people, women or men who may be suffering from uh, these kinds of abuses and pray for them specifically and pray about their issues and also give them the kind of encouraging word and refer them appropriately to our church structures and systems that are able to help them, counsel them and help them back on their feet. So these are the a few things that I'll share with you about how do we improve the gains that have been made so far and I'm hoping that it would be of help to your conference, it will be helpful for the women but particularly for the leaders of our churches. Let's not make this a women's issue. Let's make this a societal issue, a national issue, a church issue, a family issue and one that is also worth bringing before the Lord our God who has such a heart for those who are suffering, those who are abused, those who are vulnerable and, and, and ask for his help in, in direction in how we should deal with it uh, uh, using all the resources and the and the structures that has been given us so thank you very much may god bless you um i'll leave you with a few questions and one of the questions that i would want to leave you with is what practical strategies can the church put in place at the local level local assembly level to help address the issue of gender-based violence within the church and be within society what practical strategies can be